This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio. This is a place where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love and discover the truth of who you really are. Are any of you writers out there? or someone who's had a right for a presentation or some other reason? If you're like me, I bet you've run into times when the words just don't come to you, or the sentences you do write don't really express the thoughts you want to share. As a writer, I've had this happen to me more times than I care to admit. Many years before I started this podcast, what I like to call my previous life was in fact my pre-dreamwork life several decades ago, I was a working writer who wrote or ghost wrote 21 young adult novels, but then I stopped. In fact, I had such a deep case of writer's block, I didn't put a single creative word on paper for 25 years. But you know what turned it around for me? It was my dreams. It started with keeping a dream journal, which meant I had to write down my dreams to remember them. And this got me back in the practice of putting down my thoughts. Then. Part of my training to become a dream life coach, I had to produce an independent project, and that became the basis of my first post dream work book, 101 Dream Dates. And since then, I've written or have been a part of nine other books, all inspired by my dreams. But I'm not the only one who sees how dreams can help our creativity. Author and certified dream work professional, Sylvia Gover, teaches how to access your dreams to spark your imagination in her Dreaming on the Page classes and workshops. She's the author of several books, including her latest book on writing called Dreaming on the Page, in which she shares her methods for using your dreams to enhance your writing. Welcome to Dream Power Radio, Tivia. Oh, Debbie, it's so good to be here. Thank you. Oh, and I'm so glad to have you back because we always have such great conversations about dreams. But I want to ask you this, since we are talking about dreams and writing, When did you first see the connection between dreams and creativity? Oh, that's a great question. For me, they've always been so linked. You know, ever since I was a little girl, I was remembering and talking about my dreams. And from very early on, I was also creative, writing poems and stories. So it's really hard to tease it apart. It's one of those things. I tell this story in my book, Dreaming on the Page, about speaking to a young man in Guatemala and asking him, he was from that part of the world and tradition and asking him what he thought about dreams. And it took him a long time to answer. And at first I thought maybe I offended him or I asked the wrong question. But when he finally answered, he said, it's so integrated into my life. I don't know how to answer that. And that's sort of how I feel about this connection. It's been part of the way I write forever. I will often just take a dream and lightly edit it and find a poem in it. Um, And at the same time, I'm always remember reminded when I'm dreaming or, you know, when I'm talking and thinking about dreams, how much dreams affirm that we're all naturally creative. So it's a hard question for me to answer. To me, it's always seemed so obvious. And now I realize that I need to state the obvious and explain it for people and back into it. Well, I tell you, I wish it was obvious to me all those years ago when when I was writing novels, because life might have been quite different. (laughs) If I knew then what I know now, what I'm learning from people like you. So uh, it is a process and a journey. Well, your story, I just have to say, I hadn't heard that version of your story before, and I was very inspired by it. Um, And it makes me really happy that we're having this conversation. So maybe we can help people wake up to this fact earlier so they don't have to struggle with long periods of dry creative blocks. Yes, yes, indeed. That is so true. But you created the Dreaming on the Page program to help struggling writers. Can anyone benefit from the program or do you have to be a dreamer? I always say that you don't have to remember your dreams even. And you don't have to think of yourself as a writer. So people take the classes and read the book who are just curious. They're curious about their dreams or they're curious about a new way to write. 
or maybe they keep a journal and they want new inspiration. And I also have people who are authors, who I have a best-selling author who loves to take my courses and has been very supportive of the book. So it's the whole gamut. It does. And you talk about poetry, like you just mentioned that you got inspiration for poetry from dreams that you've edited, but can you use it for all tech, all kinds of writing? Yeah. So like you, I'm an author of many books and some of the, and I like how you put it, part of many books, I have poems and stories and anthologies. And I was a journalist originally. And so dreams have supported my writing and support the writing of the others I work with. We have bloggers, songwriters, journalists, memoirists, poets, story writers. And like I said, people who don't even think of themselves as writers, but who have stories to tell. And that, that it's amazing that they can access all of that from the program. Let me ask you this, though. Why does paying attention to our dreams make us better writers? So a lot of reasons. For one thing, when we're asleep and dreaming, the neurochemical stew that our minds shift into is one that does with ease what we struggle to do with at the desk. So as writers, we want to have vivid imagery in what we write. We want to have memorable characters, you know, plots that keep us, you know, at the edge of our seat. And our dreams just do that for us every night. So by paying attention to our dreams on one level, we're just reminded of how naturally creative we are, and that could give us a boost of confidence. But also, we can take things from our dreams that might not be the whole dream, but we might grab an image or a turn of phrase. Dreams can be very punny. You know, they can be very clever with words as well as images. And as you mentioned, keeping a dream journal, well, so many writers struggle to, what do I put on the page? You know, that sort of frozen in front of the blank page moment. But when you have dreams, you always have a text to start with. And then from there you can flow. So starting to track your dreams is a way to just start a daily writing practice that can lead and open the door into other projects or ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just mentioned dream journals, you know, which I think is just so valuable in so many different ways. But is there a technique to write down our dreams that helps us better remember them or help spark those ideas that you're just talking about? Yeah, for remembering dreams, just the simple act of intending to remember them. And then the act of writing is just sort of mysterious and beautiful how that might prompt a memory of a dream. So sometimes I'll wake up and think I didn't remember a dream. But if I open up my notebook and I pick up my pen, and even if I start writing, you know, I don't quite remember a dream or I know I dreamed, but just that act of getting the gears in motion might start a dream memory that we can then write down. So that's very interesting. But you asked how to write them down. Yes. And I always suggest writing them down in present tense. So not I was running, but I am running. And that helps us to get back, sort of hooked back into the emotional intensity of the dream, into the aliveness of the dream. And that can help you see the story or poem in it more easily. And it can also help you remember more of the dream detail. Well, why is that? Why why is it so important to have it in the present? Well, I think it is keeping it alive. Once we put it in the past, we've distanced ourselves a little bit. You know, you can feel it when you say it. You know, yesterday... I saw a tree versus I'm looking at a tree. And that just brings you into the present moment with all the sensory vividness. So, and the emotional connection too. Yeah. And I could see how it helps because if you are visualizing it, you're looking at it in the present, even just remembering the dream, it does bring out some things that you might not have remembered if you were just writing it down as I saw it in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is it. It's it's one of those little tiny little things that makes such a big difference. That's right. <laughs> Just a subtle shift. Mm-hmm. Well, 
we're not the only ones who who are aware of using dreams for creativity. In fact, you know, there are so many writers, famous writers who have known about the value of accessing their dreams. Can you talk a little bit about some of them and you know, what they did? Oh, sure. So when we think about literature, we're really thinking about dreamers. Just the act of writing is dreaming with our eyes open. But that said, it's hard to even know where to begin. Shakespeare famously has a lot of dream imagery and comments on dreams in his writing. So we can only assume that he was an active dreamer. Some of my favorite poets, Lucille Clifton, um, Naomi Shihab Nye, um, Langston Hughes, they all incorporate dreams in some way into their writing. Samuel Taylor Coleridge incorporated dream visions and we could just go on and on. Fiddler on the Roof has famous dream scenes and that of course started as a short story and became a movie and a play. So just about in every culture, in every basic text, the Bible, if we want to go back to the Bible and Gilgamesh have dream sequences in them. So they're everywhere. They they are everywhere. In fact, I don't know if you heard it, but about a year or so ago, I did a podcast with my next door neighbor who happens to be a poet mm-hmm. and how he accesses his dreams Yeah, to write the poetry. So, exactly. you know, it is it is so, so important. Well, we're going to take a little break here and then get back to more talk about dreams. We are on Dream Power Radio talking with Sylvia Gover, and we'll be right back. If you're not pleased with the trajectory of your life, the time to begin your own personal transformation is now, and your dreams can help pave the way. How? By tapping into your unvoiced confidence. What is unvoiced confidence, you say? It's acceptance of your abilities and qualities. It's a state of mind coming from liking and even loving yourself and feeling free to say or do anything you want without concern for the judgment of others. You were born confident, but may have had it chipped away little by little by the negative self-beliefs you've picked up over the years. If you're looking for the heightened energy, clarity of thought, and the feeling of being more alive that comes from self-confidence, you can rediscover it by paying attention to your dreams. Need some help doing this? Go to my website, thedreamcoach.net, and sign up for my complimentary dream discovery session. I can help show you how your dreams can help you return to the confident person you were always meant to be. Again, go to thedreamcoach.net, thedreamcoach.net. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter weissman Yes, welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Spector Weissman, and we're talking all about dreams and creativity with Sylvia Gover. Well, Sylvia, your book contains writing prompts to help struggling writers. Could you give me a few of them and explain how they spark creativity? Oh, absolutely. So, as you mentioned, the book, you know, it starts out with some essays and explanations about dreams and journaling and how to put dreams and writing together. But then the whole middle part is just about 40 or more prompts to get you started. And I'll give you a basic one just to, you know, open it up in an easy, fun way. So one thing you can do to get yourself started is to take a dream, take the dream you had last night, and now we're going to do a little one of those shifts we talked about. We talked about writing it in present tense. Well, to try something different, try writing it down in third person. So now instead of I am looking at a tree, she is looking at a tree. And when you write the dream in third person instead of first person, you'll notice that you might start finding a story in there. You might start finding sort of that sort of basic storyline, the through line, the plot line that carries it forward, the archetypal story that you're telling, it might transfer to more of a fairy tale or something like that. It's really an interesting exercise. Yeah, I would think I can think it would be, especially because if you create that distance, then it's not about you. And then you could pretend and maybe, maybe make it 
the person you wish to be. Or That's exactly right. It opens up your imagination even farther. Yes. Yes, I could say, and that's that's a fun thing to do too, to just really fly with that and see where it takes you. So I could definitely see that. Oh, do you have another one you could share? Absolutely. And with that one, I want to also say it's very helpful with nightmares because nightmares can really shake us up and scare us. Yeah, yeah when you were talking, us- when you were talking, I was saying, yeah, you know, it's what we do with nightmares. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So if you put that in the third person, you can stay with the nightmare a little longer and maybe not only learn from it what it's trying to tell you, why it's trying to get your attention, but also you might get a great story out of it like Stephen King has done. (laughs) Mm. So another fun prompt and a nice easy one, and you can use this on just one dream or a series of dreams. Just take the line in this dream and fill in the blank with, maybe just one image or action from your dream. So, you know, in this dream, I see a rainbow. In this dream, a woman with a rose colored cloak is smiling at me. So you just take different lines from your dream and put them together. And the repetition of in this dream will help string it all together like a poem. Mm. That's another fun one. I love these. I want to Turn it around a bit and let's get back to your own process. So do you dream ideas that come to you in your dreams or do entire pieces show up in your dreams? Okay, so that's a great question. And I'll answer it for myself and everybody will have a variety of answers for themselves. But for me, I often will get lines and images. I don't usually get, although sometimes I do, a whole cloth story or a whole poem and a whole cloth. So definitely ideas. And it's not only ideas for the writing. Sometimes it's the idea of where to go next with it, right? Like, you know, should I publish this? Should I share it? Is this just for me? And sometimes it's just a little seed. So it could be a little image from a dream that when I write the whole story, It's just, you know, one 32nd of the whole thing, but it's what sparked it. It's what the whole story sprang from. So it's really just a case by case situation of what works. Then do you find you get ideas from all of your dreams? Oh, my goodness. Well, let me put it this way. I never have any dearth of ideas. I have more ideas than I know what to do with. And I find that that is a common trait among dreamers, among people who remember a lot of dreams. So I get many more ideas than I could ever put into stories or poems, or, you know, I get ideas for other things too. I get ideas for where a certain relationship should go or, you know, what else I want to do in my life. So I think as dreamers, we are just, you know, blossoming with ideas all the time. Yeah. So do you use your dreams to figure out which ideas to focus on? <laughs> Sometimes I ask my dreams to simplify it for me. Like I might even just ask just one clear dream tonight, but maybe that's a good idea. I can ask them to help me winnow, winnow it down. You know, there's been more talk in recent years than, than certainly when I first started my journey into dream work uh, about lucid dreaming. Does lucid dreaming make for more creative ideas or does it not really make a difference? Lucid dreaming is a great tool for writers. So when we're talking about lucid dreaming, we're talking about knowing knowing that you're dreaming while you are dreaming. So once you have that knowledge, you can influence the dream. So for example, if you're having a lucid dream, this is one way a writer might use it. You might say, show me what my character's motivation is, or let me meet my character, or show me the next book I should be writing, et cetera. So whether or not you can achieve classic lucid dreaming, and this is actually something I'll be talking about at the International Association for the Study of Dreams conference in June, whether or not you can achieve classic lucidity, where you are really 
awake enough in the dream to know that you're dreaming and to be able to interact with the dream in that way. You can use a lot of the lessons from lucid dreaming in your writing. So that might take a little more discussion, but the basic gist of it is to have that awareness of a dream in progress. So when we're writing, we are literally dreaming on the page. And when we start to become aware of the hybrid nature of that mind state, which is similar to the hybrid nature of our mind state when we're dreaming, we can use it more consciously to help guide the writing process, but not overwhelm it. Let the writing process unfold and gently guide it, just as we would in a lucid dream. Think very, very interesting there. What about people who tell you that they can't remember their dreams? How can you help them? Well, I think I just gave an example of it a few minutes ago. So we can use wake life experiences as our dreams or as we use our dreams. So when you just asked me for a dream writing technique, I use the wake life experience of our conversation right now to imagine you know, landscape with a rainbow and a woman in a rose jacket. So I offer different suggestions for using wake life events in the same way that we would use dream material. And also just by knowing that you do dream because you do, whether you remember them or not, can help with your writing in some of the ways I already discussed, knowing that you're a natural storyteller, that your dreams are supporting you and creating imagery and metaphor, but also in acknowledging that your mind goes through these different shifts. All day long, our consciousness is shifting every 90 minutes or so into different types of thinking, you know, whether it's focused thinking or more loose, dreamy thinking, even when we're awake. And, and similarly, when we fall into sleep and dreams, our consciousness shifts again. So being aware of those shifts can help you as a writer, can help you know when is the best time for you to write. Maybe it's early morning when you're still in that dreamy state, or maybe you notice cycles during the day where you're in a better mind state to get creative on the page. So there's plenty here for people who don't remember their dreams. And it really all boils down to, in a large degree, being self-aware. Yes, it's about being awake. We talk about dreaming, but our goal is to be awake and aware. And that's what lucid dreaming can help us with so much. Yeah, yeah I have a question a little bit related to this in some ways, because we've all heard about writer's block and you've given us some great ideas to spark ourselves off of that. But there are also dream droughts when we go through periods where we don't remember our dreams, at least I do. I know I do from time to time. Do you have any ways or techniques to get out of dream droughts? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's something that people come to me sometimes with, either just in general, because they're a dreamer, because they do one on one sessions with people too. And sometimes people can't remember their dreams, and it's very distressing. You know, it's a lonely feeling when you're used to having your dreams as your accompaniment and your guide, and they're gone for a while. But some people come to me because they depend on their dreams for their writing, and when they have a dream drought, that can be serious business. So there's so much that we can do, but the most important thing is not to force it, just like creativity. Sometimes we have to accept that just like there are cycles in seasons, you know, this might be a season of our mind, of our consciousness, where we need to just accept that they're not here for some reason. Now, of course, you want to first check and make sure there's not something you're doing to block the dreams, for example, have you skimped on your sleep so you're not getting the opportunity to have at least seven or so hours sleep so that you can get those longer REM periods where you're more likely to remember dreams? Or are you taking a new medication that's blocking your ability to dream? But if you've ruled that sort of thing out, all I could suggest to people is take advantage of wake life dreams while you're waiting for your nighttime dreams to come back. Put that pen and paper by your bed and write down your intention each night. Write it down. Really make it clear. Tonight, I would like to. I invite. Can't force it. 
I would like to remember my dreams. Tonight, I will remember my dreams. Hold that intention loosely each night and be patient. Take an interest in your dreams. Read about them. And that should help. Okay, very good. You've recently written a series of poems based on the matriarch, Sarah. How was this an idea inspired by a dream? Oh, wow. That's a great question. How this is, I would say, how is this related to my dreams? It, the inspiration is not direct in that sense. So what happened was, I, in my waking life, I was suffering a very, very heartbreaking, heart rendering, just heart tearing loss. I was separated from my daughter due to a custody battle for a long time. And I was devastated, as you can imagine. And I was fighting and fighting and fighting in the courts and with every fiber of my being to get my, my child back. Well, one night, in the middle of the night, it wasn't a dream, but it was an awakening in the middle of the night. I was drawn to the story of Abraham and Sarah in the Bible. And I'm, I'm not, and I certainly wasn't at that time, a particularly re religious person. It's part of my life, but not a central part at that point. And I went to that story and looked at it. And it taught me about surrender and letting go and, and many other things. And that that sort of middle of the night awakening helped me see this, now I remember the word, archetypal story and how it could serve me in this time of loss by learning to surrender to what is. And it was a spiritual awakening for me in this journey. The good news is very shortly after I had that waking dream, my daughter was returned to me. And so this has been really a very long quest for me to investigate the story of Sarah and Abraham, but I've really been drawn into Sarah's story because it hasn't been told as much. And I've been writing poems about it. And throughout that process, dreams have inspired different moments. You know, I, I had a dream where I was writing everything about Sarah except her pregnancy. And a pregnant Sarah came to me in a dream and I was like, okay, I get it. I need to deal with this part and write poems here too. So that's a little bit of a long answer that could be even longer, but I'll leave it there. <laughs> that's it. Well, do you have any final thoughts for our audience? My final thought, yes, is to remember that you are naturally creative and your dreams are evidence of that. So claim your creative birthright, whether it's by picking up a pen or a paintbrush or just expressing what's in your heart to someone today, but really connect with your dreams because they're creative, beautiful, fun, mysterious, and they're part of you. Oh, that is so true. Well, Sylvia, how can people find out more about you and your work? Ah, so thank you for asking. My book is called Dream, my most recent book is called Dreaming on the Page. And my website, similarly, you can just go to dreamingonthepage.com or the name of my business, which also came to me in a dream, thirdhousemoon.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. Oh, what a pleasure, Debbie. Thank you for having me. We've been speaking with dream professional Sylvia Gover about dreaming and creativity. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. If so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio.